Hey there, this is Darren, founder of Density. Welcome to Density Insights, where we interview real estate experts for their expertise and opinions and help you to learn more about all things real estate. This episode with my team at PropTech Institute is one I hold close to heart. In fact, I'm often questioned if Density and PropTech Institute are the same project. Many have grown to know my passion for developing the PropTech sector in Hong Kong and my mission to do the same regionally. To answer those questions, I'm following that mission through two projects. Density began as an answer to inconvenient investing in the real estate industry. Unreliable and decentralized data forces stakeholders to overspend on time and money on due diligence. However, through digital technology, we can create a more efficient investing ecosystem through data aggregation and enable real estate companies to optimize their services in the increasing competitive digital landscape. PropTech Institute, on the other hand, is the product of finding a group of like-minded, passionate people committed to reimagining and shaping the future of real estate. PropTech Institute is an independent, non-profit association representing Asia's PropTech community, led by a team of committed professionals. The association seeks to bridge the gap between real estate and technology by providing a platform for founders, enthusiasts, and professionals to share knowledge of any element of PropTech. In this episode, my teammates at PropTech Institute will share key insights on the Hong Kong PropTech sector, the current landscape, opportunities, and recommendations for local stakeholders. We are launching the very first white paper on the Hong Kong PropTech landscape the link for which you can find in the show notes. As always, I hope you find the show useful and informative. Enjoy. As always, you can find everything we mentioned in this episode in the show notes, including our thoughts, more about the guests, and all the tips and tricks. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button like you mean it to get our regular updates. Now, take a deep breath and buckle up for the show. Hope you enjoy. Hey team, how's everything? Good. Great. Great. No, it's, it's, I'm so happy because um, Density and P- PropTech Institute has been my babies. And it's the first time that we really talk about what we've been working on. And it's something that I'm so proud of our team to work together on this. And then thank you so much for being here. And we can share about what is the findings that we have and then what we're working on and what we plan to do in the future. So thanks, Simon, Anthony, Fish, Gary, Miles. Jeff and six other teammates around the world. So let's start with Anthony. For a lot of people might not understand, would you mind telling people about what is PropTech and what's the current landscape in Hong Kong? Thank you, Darren. That's a really good uh, question. And it's a pleasure to be here. PropTech is basically really simply put, it's applying information technology into data science and real estate. Essentially, PropTech is changing people's lifestyle how they live, how they invest, and how they transact properties. So let me give a little background about current PropTech uh, landscape in Asia. Around 550 PropTech companies are currently existing in Asia. 82% of the PropTech companies are actually falling under four countries, respectively, China, India, Singapore, and Japan. Meanwhile, when you look at the funding landscape, China itself covers 75% of the funding funding, uh, within Asia. That's accounting for 10 billion USD. So how does that relate back to Hong Kong? Hong Kong is really untapped potential and can be taking advantage of China's robust prop tech platform. Within China itself, seven of the 13 uh, uh, prop tech unicorns exist uh, within China in the world. So Hong Kong, given its real estate market size, can really tap into China's uh, prop tech potential. So, there's three things to take away from this. Essentially, uh, PropTech is uh, a lot of real estate companies are going through a lot of innovation in order to stay uh, competitive, especially real estate developers. Second of all, uh, real estate needs to really branch out globally and really kind of tap into other real estate space in order for them to stay competitive. Lastly, PropTech was in FinTech seven years ago. That gives you a good perspective where PropTech can take off in terms of its potential and its future in the next half to full decade. Thank you, Derek. Much appreciated. So Fish, um, what type of PropTech solutions are there available in Hong Kong? Thanks, Darren, for the question. 
I think the best way to think about PropTech solutions in Hong Kong is to really break them down into their categories of function. So if we look at the, the whole real estate life cycle, you start with construction, thereafter you move on into the transactional phase, and thereafter it's operations and management, and finally any other improvements and efficiency gains that you can get from the real estate asset. Looking back into the construction, there are several different kinds of products and solutions you can find, ranging from project planning to design to building inspections. If we look at the second category, which is transactions, again, there are several different subcategories, you could say. Some are in the mortgage and financing to make it much more easier to access different assets. We've also got listing platforms, which make it much more easy to search and find real estate offers. And you've even got research solutions where you can aggregate data and easily assess a different real estate investment. The third category, as I mentioned, what relates to the operation side of real estate. So this includes shared economies where you can further improve the utilization of space and even property management and asset management solutions. Lastly, this, these further optimizations typically tap into smart cities where you get into IoT, sensors, where you start detecting and using data patterns to drive efficiency gains that you never had before. So Gary, I remember looking at our database of PropTech startups in Hong Kong. There are maybe like 80 of them. So if there's only a handful of them, uh, you know, PropTech startups in Hong Kong, what should people get into the space? Yeah, so what we've really seen in, in recent years is uh, evolution of the solutions being offered. If we look at the first PropTech startups, say in PropTech uh, 1.0, this was like, you know, the very first basic solution, say more like B2C. So we see like, uh, you know, listings platforms for, for rentals and sales. And now what we've seen is like an evolution into more like enterprise solutions, you know, for example, uh, to manage your overall assets, your portfolio, uh, to track, uh, you know, uh, for example, energy usage uh, in your buildings. And this has really driven a lot more interest in investment in, in, into startups. Uh, because, you know, one, the, we see the market size increasing. Uh, this is how I view PropTech as well. People always have this concern, like we're taking away certain like elements, for example, but we actually see it's like, you know, increasing the overall, you know, pie market size of, of, of real estate. And I think secondly, um, you know, there, there's been some key changes in the market, you know, and, and recent trends, for example, with COVID, this has, you know, impacted everyone. You know, for, for example, you could literally just build before in Hong Kong and build your office tower, lease it out, and it would seem like a very stable asset, right? And with good um, appreciation. But now, you know, tenants are facing, you know, for example, problems, especially in retail. Um, and you need to be a lot more creative and have, say, a lot more tools um, on hand. So this is in, in return, we've seen more solutions come to the market. And in addition, we've seen, for example, acceleration programs like Brink and Betatron being able to fund earlier stage startups. And then towards later stage uh, startups, uh, we've seen even like property companies like Gold Capital in New World, you know, start to make investments in, into later stage companies as well. And this is not just in Hong Kong, but also in, in mainland China, which um, Simon will talk more about. Thank you, Gary. Um, yeah, so I think um, all these startup and prop tech and uh, real estate are actually going into China more tremendously compared to what we haven't seen before. This is mainly driven by most of the government uh, initiatives on how they are building the strong infrastructure around uh, the region, per se. Uh, especially now that we all are talking about the Greater Bay Area, as we mentioned in our white paper. Uh, the nine cities and two special administrative regions around the southern China. Why this is important is so then Hong Kong especially could act as a jump board per se to this Bay Area. And the Bay Area, the mega cluster, as we mentioned in our white paper, 
where Nate Anthony was mentioning in the beginning of our interview, uh, the cluster actually boosts over you know 70 million uh, demographics in uh, citizens, if you will, in in the Bay Area. And what that translates is around 37% of the national export and uh, over 1.6 billion of uh, GDP. And so what that means is that a lot of these tech, such as what Fish was mentioning, uh, perhaps the shared economy and uh, the operator perspective uh, could actually help in releasing these traditional hardware real estate around the region which is why in short uh would help in the the whole gba or hong kong to have a more uh cohesive uh smart buildings or smart city in the long run uh adding on all these inf infrastructure so what we were anticipating is um the in and out flow of demographics across South Southern China, Southeast Asia, or hopefully around the region furthermore to other continents um, into China via Hong Kong. So we believe that uh, with all these mega projects in infrastructure will uh, rejuvenate uh, with all these tech coming in and out on exchanging ideas and um, at the end, uh, build back to what the tech should be. So I think further to what we have been uh, writing, uh, that will become how we see the PropTech 3.0 will be looking like. It's the diversity of people and the, the exchange of ideas that will multiply on the software, on, on these uh, old hardware. So thank you, Darren, for the question. And I think that would be my answer to uh, Gary's point. So, Miles, you and Anthony are the main driver to uh, compile the, all the research for the white paper. Uh, what is your main recommendations for you know, the audience and the stakeholders in Hong Kong? Good question. So, throughout the research, we collaborated with a bunch of industry experts and we outlined our suggestions in the white paper, but we can distill it down to five main points. The first one is more macro, big picture, think regional. Um, specifically looking towards the Greater Bay Area. And as time goes on, we'll see greater connection with uh, 9 plus 2 and as, as all these initiatives come to fruition. And with that, you will have greater flow between Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Guang Guangdong province, and mainland as well. Not just in goods, but in people and tech, talent, uh, which brings me to the second point, which is education and fostering this multidisciplinary talent through universities, through working with uh, you know, seminars, webinars, really getting word out, um, attracting people to the prop tech world. Mm. Uh, the third and fourth point I'm lumping together, and that is sort of uh, outreach, communication to not just asset managers, but also stakeholders. And prop tech is gaining steam, but a lot of work is on the, a lot of pressure is on the shoulders of sort of local prop tech talent to get the word out. It's up to us to really tell people, tell asset managers and stakeholders what services are offered, what solutions prop tech can solve. Uh, which brings me to the last point, the fifth point, uh, perhaps the most granular, and it's that of funding. Hong Kong has no issue with funding. There is a very, very robust financial system. Um, regionally, it is the center of IPO, more than Shanghai, more than Shenzhen. In 2019, we had nearly 170 IPOs. Singapore barely had 15. Um, so it's not a question of the funding is not there, but it's where is it going towards? And again, like the second, third, and fourth points, it's a matter of outreach. Uh, prop tech startups, local leaders, talent, they really need to connect with uh, not only public initiatives like those grants, but also you know VC firms and people who have the money but just don't know enough about prop tech as they should. And you know if there are any more questions about the topic, don't hesitate to reach out to Anthony or I, and it's all again outlined in the web. Thanks, Miles. And then I'm so excited for our launch. Um, for the audience, if you're interested to learn more about it, you can go to our website and you can have the first access 
on download the white paper and you can always talk to us to learn more about it. But before we go, Jeff, would you mind telling the audience about what we're up to and then how they, how they can get involved in PropTech as well? Yeah, I think the, um, the exciting thing for what's to come is, you know, we started this little group of ours about two years ago and the whole mission was just to bring awareness of PropTech into Hong Kong. And organically, this group kind of grew into something more special. You know, we had a mission statement was, which was not just bringing awareness of PropTech into Hong Kong, but you know, how can we actually help people in this ecosystem? And we started by hosting events for professionals in the industry. And it really grew into these strong working relationships with different people. Uh, with some of the top players in the industries, you know, we've been involved with Cyberport, uh, which is a huge name, and obviously they have various programs to help startups in in this space. Um, to people like Great Eagle, who are um, a very very well known conglomerate. So I think our vision has now uh, formulated to something that's beyond awareness, but into something that's real change, and. I think that change, well, for example, is this year we want to put a lot of emphasis into startups and hooking them up with funders or people who can really help them. And that's really going to build this whole prop tech community. And I think the first question when we're in our various group meetings and we discuss amongst ourselves, you know, what is the kind of short term? medium term direction, what's the next step? What are we going to do? What's the next project we're going to take on? Um, we ask ourselves, do we have something that's going to really bring, um, really bring help to this prop tech ecosystem that's here in Hong Kong? And are we going to build this community? If the answer is no, then we really have to rethink about what we've done. And this is how we've organically grown. And that's what I'm really excited to see. You know, we're, you know, the quote unquote uh, leaders in this space now, and we're really presented with a lot, of, a lot of opportunity. And we're very now selective about who we work with and how we can collaborate with these uh, industry leaders. You know, I think through these collaborations and networks that we've built, we're now looking into expand into Shanghai. Uh, we're looking to expand into Singapore. Uh, we're looking to expand into Canada. And we have all these leaders now in place in these various cities um, to take this to the next level. And that's why I'm so excited about this white paper that we have, because it's really going to um, lay the foundations and the groundwork for what PropTech is, how we've made an influence here in Asia, and how we're going to take this to the next level. I'm so happy that how far we've gone and then I hope that there are more to come and thanks everyone for being here, sharing the work we have done so far and then for the audience to want to work with us to learn more about Proctor Institute, please contact us and we have everything in the show notes and I'm looking forward for our launch and I hope you like it and enjoy and really you know, contact us to learn more about it. Thank you everyone. Thanks for watching. You know, majority of you don't stick around this far. so. We flatter and truly appreciate your attention. To return the favor, let us tell you our thought on this episode. The PropTech Institute white paper on the Hong Kong PropTech landscape is monumental for the local real estate industry. The paper distills and presents industry expert insights and experience. Perspectives from startup founders, venture capitalists, real estate professionals, private sector stakeholders, academics, and public sector professionals are all featured. The growing prop tech industry once had less traction in influencing consumer and policy change. This has changed. 2021 has accelerated prop tech, transforming the sector from a novelty to an increasing appreciated and integrated movement. Prop tech Institute's mission feeds this growth. Its platform fostering startups like Density that are terraforming the real estate landscape. She knows to say, these two projects, Density and Profit Institute, are my babies. I pride myself on the great work from our cross-functional team and platform of real estate professionals 
and believe I speak for the community when I say I am committed and excited to see what the future holds. If, like, if you'd like to learn more about PropTech and how to get involved, please reach out via PropTech Institute's email, info at proptechinstitute.org. We have a more detailed version of our thoughts in the show notes. Beside that, you can find more about the guests and all the tips and tricks we have mentioned in the show notes too. Well, what do you think? Let us know in the comments section. Fun fact, do you know that more than 85% of you have subscribed to this show yet? Subscribe now to keep getting good stuff from us. Thanks for watching. What do you think of this episode? Please let us know in the comment below and be sure to hit the subscribe button to keep in touch with us for upcoming videos. But before we go, I want to give a big shout out to Patina Design Lab. They're the one who help us in making our brand, our direction, as well as these videos. They are a strategic design consultancy firm that help businesses with a wide range of design services, from industrial design, branding, graphic design, art direction, content creation, and many more. They are a very talented bunch, and I urge you to check out their website for their work. That's all for today, and see you next time. Cheers.